Thank you all for joining us again. Uh, we'll pick up right where we ended last time. All right, so um, you've been through this crazy journey, and the rumor is that you're not uh, single anymore. <laughs> so uh, is there something uh, that you want to share? What is happening? Is it a match made in heaven? <laughs> Match made in heaven is the right word. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's it's an incredible story because I think especially over the last decade, as once you pass 30, everybody does that and says, oh, Naveen, yeah. you're crossing 30, you're not married, what is this? In my 20s, I said, my granddad, I don't know, Naveen, you're 26, you're <laughs> not married, <laughs> what is this? Uh, a lot of my friends are at that crossroad now where they want to get married and can't get married yet. They're 26. Yeah. 26, yeah. Especially the ones who are listening. Listening and <laughs> taping us. And taping us, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but I think I always, a lot of people say different things on the subject. And I think everybody's entitled to their opinion. And I think the one thing that I always felt was when the right person comes, I'll know. And well, the right, lots of good people came and I saw a lot of boxes getting ticked. Mm -hmm. And there were bunches of them that weren't ticked. So did I wait for God for it? No, no, no. I just ticked them myself and said yes. Right? Mm. And I, I've been, I was in two relationships, and and they added a lot to me in different ways. Right? I think I learned so much from them, and um, I went through my hurts through them. But I, like, I think I came out, I did come out hurt from um, from one of them, really badly hurt. But I learned so much from it. I learned so much about myself that I was like, I had so much to learn and improve on. Um, but then I, I also made a choice at that point of time that I was not going to get into something till I was sure that was what God wanted me to be in. Mm. Right? And when I said sure, I'm not going to tick any boxes. I'm going to let it be. And I've always generally, one of the things I remember growing up is every, everyone always said the th things that normally get to people is power, money and, mm. and women. And especially in music, those are the things that you need to watch out for. So I... The power thing is something you have to keep working on. Mm. Money, especially in Indian music, is not too much, so you don't have to worry about that too much. <laughs> uh, but you learn to be a good steward of the money. I yeah. think that was a lesson that I learned um, at Separate on Money. And with regard to women, I think one of the things I was always very careful on was being able to draw lines. Mm. And um, I have this one funda that I do, which um, which I use for myself. Said that is a permissible line. And there's a line that Naveen draws. The dry Naveen draws is two feet away from the permissible line. <laughs> simply because on a bad day, if Naveen crosses his line, he's still way behind the per permissible line. Mm. And well. I don't tell every I don't tell people that you have to do it. This is the way to do it. I just do it for myself because I said, Naveen, on your worst day, mm. if you feel really low, what is the line that you will not cross? Mm. And I put that line for myself way before anybody else. So for everybody else, Naveen is just like really very well behaved. Naveen just does that so that Naveen is. I don't think it's wrong to go up to the line. Mm. What is right or wrong? It just you can walk up to the line. But I just did that for myself because I said, you know what? It's the one thing that can be a weakness. Mm. So let's not grow even close to that line. Mm. Right. So that's something that I put in place even when I was in college. Forget mm. data in line. So. It was really funny that I I did I was touring with one of my bands and we were, we had a after party after one of the concerts and uh, there was these uh, girls that came up and uh, they would come and try and sit on your lap and stuff like that. I excused myself and walked out and my bandmate came up to me and said, "Naveen, never ask you a question." <coughs> and I said, "Hey, what's the like? What's up?" He said, "Are you gay?" <laughs> I'm just like, "No, I'm a straight to straight happens. <laughs> like I'm proper. I'm like straight. Like yeah. I'm straight." said, what makes you think that? He says, no. Like after the, at these after parties, all these pre-girls would come up to you and try and sit next to you and try and talk to you. And you have a very crisp conversation with them and then you get to excuse yeah. yourself and walk away. And I said, I think for me, I want to respect people for being people. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, I don't want to, like a lot of, a lot of, like a lot of admiration is very emotional. Mm and can be mistaken for love and I think for me the key was always I respect somebody sometimes they don't know what you're doing so I respect them enough to be able to stop in a certain point mm. of time and walk away so one of the things that I would always try and do is keep that distance 
not because it was i was trying to avoid people it's always because i was just like hey nah. like i don't want anybody to be i don't want to get emotionally attached to anybody i don't want anyone mm. to get emotionally attached to me i would be friends and i would and i do the friendship process a little slower i'm not the kind who will say like i will talk to everybody like i like people like i could i can talk to people anytime i don't have a problem with them but i only allow people to get i only get close to people over a period of time mm. and by that time the boundaries are well established and i'm like everything is relatively clear um but i'm always and i think i had a friend of mine he came came up to me once and said devin you're never going to meet somebody if you have your boundaries up that high mm. and i i remember telling them that this when the right person happens they will get past every boundary because god knows me mm. and he knows who the right person for me is and and i'm going to do this right i'm going to do it i'm going to not choose the right person i'm going to choose the person that god chooses mm. and says that's right yeah. um and it was just really weird and long story short like so there there've been people that people have tried to set me up with and um most of them i'm just like no because i think the big thing for me was i always wanted somebody who had a heart for god and like beyond just doing church mm. and doing christian activities yeah. but also knew how to live in a world that was not christian mm. and that for me was really important i didn't want somebody to just live in a church i wanted somebody to live in a world that there's no church so mm. it was really important to be able to connect with people that didn't know god at all and that was really important for me because most christians you take them out of church they like a fish out, out of water mm. um they don't have to talk to anybody outside church they really really struggle with it mm. and for me the key was having somebody who really like it didn't make like it shouldn't make a difference whether you're from church or not from church mm. and i never really found that very easily and or you'd meet a person who felt like i'm i met one person i thought was an incredibly really nice person really incredible person but you come back from it and say god i don't have the peace like what is wrong is something wrong with me because i don't find the peace about it mm. it seems like the right like the person's amazing but there's no peace about it and and one of the things i've always done is right in the beginning i will not start something i will always let it be till i'm 100% sure and then step in because i've made enough mistakes in my life jumping in and then figuring out mm. idiot right so especially in this area i said i'm going to take it really slow so technically I, so basically long story short i had this friend of mine who called me up one day and said navin I don't know why I didn't think of this this is a friend of mine mm. that I need to connect you with and she says this every every year with so much conviction and she forgets about it the next day mm. so I was just like yeah she's going to forget about the next day thank god I avoided another one mm. right um but two days later she said hey have you got in touch with her? I'm going to send you an email I want you to send her an email um so Tanya is the girl that I'm um married to now uh she lived in india uh she's british but she lived in india between 2002 and 2004 and then again from 2008 to 2010 um and the irony is this she lived 5 minutes walking distance from home mm. uh we have tons of common friends in uh common friends between us but we we never ever met well. uh <laughs> between 2008 and 2010 she came to the same church i went to mm. i know we were in the same services mm. because we know incidents that happened during those services and we she like were you there and she was mm. like yeah you were there but we never met each other wow. she went back to the uk and we got connected because of these friends of ours mm. and i think it's absolutely incredible because i think there was as much as you say you were waiting for the right person i think god was also we waiting to do the work that he needed to do do in you yeah. for the right person. Yeah. I think God was just really working on us individually on our calls individually and whatever and we met so we basically started chatting every day mm. for about 6 months and then I said okay I'm going to go try and meet her. And I kind of knew this was the right person but I said you know what I am not going to commit to anything till I meet her and then we chat and see how we can deal with conflict how mm. can we deal with stuff when things aren't really the most smooth mm. and and when how better to figure out things are not smooth 
hang around each other mm. force yourself in situations and i said i'm not going to compromise on what i and i've always said i'm never going to compromise on what i think important in a person mm. um and technically i didn't i wasn't really big on trying to marry a foreigner at all because for me that was more problematic than uh, normal because you want somebody like for us naturally as indians family is the core of how mm. you function from a family base um not from a place where i'm independent and then i work mm. uh most foreigners work from a place i'm independent family is is a part is runs parallelly with him but it's not the core of who i am mm. so there are lots of those things i said oh like like the thought of having to work through that is just a lot more painful and i don't want to really do that but it's really ironic that i landed up getting married to a girl who's brit uh but very strangely i didn't have to compromise on a single value wow. of what is important to me because how much how i value god is how she values god mm. um in areas in in so many areas she values it the way she looks at it is incredible like i come back and say okay now i need to do a little rain check on how i look at situations the way god wants me to look at it because she looks at it so beautifully mm. um and i think the one thing i always wanted is somebody who would be able to stand up and talk to me and challenge me and help me look at things differently yeah. wouldn't be afraid to stand up and say you're wrong mm. and she can stand up and say you're wrong straight mm. up in fact when i went and met her and i met her parents i said one of she said what do you like the most about tanya and i said remember telling her mom this i said i love the fact that she can speak her mind um and she can be very articulate she said oh you'll never have a problem with that she always speaks her <laughs> mind so i think we have two people who speak yeah. our minds out <laughs> uh and i think it's incredible because for me the one thing i don't want to waste time is guessing and running around in circles yeah and it's incredible how god has every desire of your heart put put together and she loves indian food she gets along with my mom breed brilliantly they f- i we get along it's not just as individuals like one of my prayer by prayer is always god lot don't let us just get let us get along really well but let our families get along really well mm. Right now we are like one big family which is amazing. Wow, so um um and I love her f- her family is incredible. Uh, like I love her family to bits. They're in- incredible people. They they really warm, they're very friendly. They they love God passionately. They have a heart for people. Mm. Uh they love music. They wow, they're not so cool. like they don't play music professionally or anything of that sort, but they love music. Music is a big part of their their lives. And, but I love it. I think it's incredible because God it took a long time it mm. took many years of me sitting back saying god i i remember my mom laughed at me because i remember sitting with her and saying that i don't think i'm i'm even going to get married because i don't <laughs> because i'm not going to compromise and yeah. i'm not going to find the right person now the irony in the story is this is my part of the story you should listen to the tiny side of the story mm. uh tani has ever been in a relationship before mm. because she said i am not going to compromise on what god has called for me so mm. unless it's right i'm not going to get into anything she's like two steps ahead of me that way i didn't she didn't make the mistakes she just said i am not going to compromise not going to compromise not going to compromise and everyone told her the same thing you're if you're going you have your standards set so high you're not going to get in you're not going to meet anybody but sometimes god just but i think god took us through our own journeys to chisel away stuff in our hearts and and fix stuff in us so yeah. that we fit in a way that god expects us to fit yeah. together and i think that is the story of of me being married to Tanya it's not again it's not a story of me finding the most incredible person around she is incredible mm. but it's about god hand picking and hand working two people and yeah. making them right for each other wow. so, so yeah. beautiful yeah it's incredible right. i think as each day goes <laughs> by i'm more shocked and more amazed about how incredible that journey has been because sometimes i look at her and she says stuff and i'm like are you for real is that real yeah who talks like that like god i remember one night i went i went to sleep and and she had sent me this message and i was not going through a good i went through a really hard mm. couple of days and she sent me this message and i said god you give me a woman who can point me to you mm. you give me somebody who can speak your word into my life and who's not afraid to tell me i'm wrong Yeah. but can speak your word into my life and give me perspective in the times i need it wow and turns around and tells me like hey navin let's work on it together yeah. and everything for her has always been hey let's work on this together guys this is real it's yeah. done it's done so <laughs> it's done i'm just like whoa so, i am not soloing anymore yeah. i am doing teamwork do you so. want to tell us how long you waited 40 years 
40 years. 30. <laughs> come on, yeah, guys. I, I'm uh, no, uh, 39 years. I got married just before. 39 years. Come on. Look at that. So now we've waited and God yeah, provided. Think, yeah, and, and a lot of people say, I'm, a, I'm 30, my life's over, I'm not going to get married. You have no idea. You, like I, keep, I, tell, I told this friend of mine, do you rather be 32 and married because you want to be married mm. and then realize it's not right or wait till God brings the right person yeah. and then be married and then realize it's... Remember, whether it's the right person or wrong person, it's a lot of work. Yeah. And it's a lot of the less of me and the... It's less of what I want and the more of what you think God wants. And I think when two people put the less of the I and then there's more of God and then it works. So Amen. you'd Amen. rather do that with the right person than the wrong person. So. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Wow. Cool. Um, I think you're uh, one of probably the most creative people that I've come across. Uh, so probably I'm, you know, but uh, and I think you have definitely helped me see music for a little bit more than my eyes was open to it. Uh, I love music, listening to it and all that, but I think, yeah, especially when it came to playing with you, I, I know all of us, especially face-to-face, -face, we are like, oh, no, Nevin's playing, so <laughs> let's try to figure out what we're actually doing, you know? Um, so, but, uh, so a lot of people go through this phase, right? Like, they are, I know this is my calling, and then they are like, okay, there is a creative aspect to all of this. Uh, is there something that you need to do about God's calling or do you leave it to God? So for me, a calling is like an investment, right? Mm -hmm. I think God puts things in you and you work on it. Yeah. Um, it's a skill that's been given to you, so you work on it. So the one thing I, I see very often in church is a lot of people who have a lot of skill and a lot of people with that skill not working at all. And I think it's the one thing that bothers me the most yeah. because on a scale of 1 to 10, I see a lot of people with 8 on 10 in scale. Mm. 9 on 10 is genius. You don't find too many of those in the world. Yeah. 8 on 10 is brilliant. Like, mm. like uh, 9 on 10 will be Jacob Collier. So I'm, mm. I'm, that's how I mark. Yeah. Nobody ever gets 10 on 10. You get 9 on 10. That's incredible, right? But most of the people I've seen around in churches are, are, are 8 on 10. Yeah. I consider myself a 5 on 10. Right? Oh Lord, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> now, now, the key about this is this. Yeah. So maybe even four on ten, that's how I consider it. Uh, it is not about how much you're given. Mm -hmm. It's how well you steward what you give, what you're yeah. given. Yeah. And my job has always been, if I have, if God's given me this, if God's given you a child, how do you look after the child? Mm. You care for them, you nourish them, you, you work on them. If God's given you a car, how do you look after the car? Yeah. You clean it, you maintain it, whatever. When God's given you a talent, what do you do with it? Don't turn up on Sunday and just use it. Yeah. <laughs> you work on it. And and the one thing that I've always really believed, and I said, because the thing is this, like I said, God, you've given me the talent when I don't really have too much of it. Mm. I'm going to work on it and just do the best I can do with it. It's just as simple as that. Because worship is always doing the best I can do with God. And yeah. it doesn't earn me brownie points with God, but it just helps me saying, God, this is what I have. I'm putting this at your feet. I'm just doing yeah. whatever I can do, the best I can do. Um, whether the best is in in line with a hundred musicians, mine will be a six on ten compared to all the other musicians around. There'll be yeah. eight on ten, nine on ten. Naveen's best is a six on ten. But my job is not to come and churn out eight on ten, nine on ten. Mm. My job is to come out and churn out six on ten. Mm. What God does with the six on ten is the same story that you see in the Bible when you look at the, the boy with the five loaves and two, yeah. two fish is what God does with the little mm. how he multiplies it and how he uses it to impact mm. a crowd of people yeah. and for me it's just that my job is to carry my my the talents and it doesn't necessarily need to be music it could be my ability yeah. to, do to, to do accounts my ability to, to plan my ability to organize and how can I use that to better God's kingdom? And how can I use that to impact people and help them in their lives? And that's it. That's all I care about. Mm. I don't want really... Um, a lot of people have come and said, Naveen, you're going to land up getting a Grammy. I said, don't care whether I get a Grammy or not. My big deal is, if my music can manage to impact people's lives at some point of time, yeah. and help them look at things differently and experience God's love, that's what my music was meant to do. Yeah. Right? And if God... And I say, God... Whether it's through the music or elsewhere, if you can provide sustenance for whatever I need for for life and 
for my family. Mm. That's what I care about. I can, I, like the thing is this, if God needs to make the money happen, he will make the money happen. Yeah. And I've seen that in my life a million times over. Yeah. Impossible goals will happen. Yeah. But it happens because God makes it happen, not because you, you've concocted 500 different ways to make it happen <laughs> and then get bitter over the fact that it didn't. Yeah. Right? Um, so I think the key has always been to take the, give the best of what you have to God. Mm. The little as well. If you have a lot, then you're accountable for a lot more. So work on it. Yeah. And the power of bringing in hard work. Um, like, so if you have a song that you have to learn and come up, come to church uh, for rehearsal, listen to the song as many times as you can. Write down the order of the song and the chords of the song. Yes. <laughs> That's the least you can do. So when you come in, everyone's, it's like when you come in for a potluck, uh, mm. we just have to come and eat. When we come in there, you just have to eat, right? That's what happens. The rea nobody comes in for a potluck bringing raw rice, raw chicken, ginger, garlic, everything, and then coming and kicking, cooking in a potluck. Yeah. That never happens. Why? Because a potluck is a time where everyone's sitting together and, and catching up and, yeah. and, and really bringing the stuff together and really sharing and enjoying the experience doing that together. Mm. The problem in church is very often, and most Christians, and I, I think we've gotten used to that system where you just come in yeah. and say, I've, I've got that ability, so I'll play. But the key is to come in with your ingredients prepped and ready for the feast. Well, come on, guys. <laughs> come prepared. <laughs> come prepared. I think that's yeah. the least you can do. Yeah. yeah. Right? So I think, yeah, like a lot of, you know, like I keep hearing this, right? Like, so people talk about their calling and uh, somehow we have like got to that place where we believe that, you know, God is creative and we are not. Yeah. Know? Like where some dumb character that God created you know and like God has to show up from heaven on earth shake you up and say go do this you know uh, so I think a lot of us you know um, I, I know people that are listening also they might be waiting on your calling but you need to be careful about whether you're waiting on God or is God waiting on you yeah. you know because because you don't want to put in the hard work or you're not sure you're not confident you're still not sure about the calling and you'll never know till you put in the work that you need to put in yeah, and see what God does with it. Yeah. I think actually I will quickly say one thing. I think one of the biggest struggles, especially if you are a creative person, yeah. and you don't have to worry if you're non-creative. You can churn out anything you want to. The problem with a creative person is a creative person is very critical. Yeah. And every creative person thinks that their work is not good enough. Mm -hmm. So I think the biggest problem we have is not the fact that really the calling or not really seeing the calling or really not putting stuff out is being so self-critical of yourself yeah. and whether you, you look at the product and say, it's not good enough, like, it's, yeah. like maybe I should go work on it some more. I don't really like it. And I think every artist, every artistic person is so critical of their work. Sometimes the most critical work gets locked up in the house. <laughs> it never goes out. Yeah. But sometimes it just takes a lot of courage to step out. And I think, I think that's the thing that we need to pray for as creative people yep. in church. Is really for the courage to take the little, even the unfinished things that we think looks improper and put it out. I had a friend of mine who's not a believer, but he turned around and told me something really incredible. Naveen, you will never get fresh ideas unless you get rid of the old ideas. Mm. And I think that's incredible. Yeah. I th listened to it and said, yeah, maybe I need to just flush out work that I have here that I think is not not good. Put it out. Yeah. What's people going to say? They're going to say, oh, it's not really nice. Mm. Fine, swallow it. It's also my ego trying to say, it's yeah. not very nice. Put it away and and let the new stuff release. Yeah. Sometimes you have to get rid of the old, get in the new. Oh. Get rid of the old, get in the new. Stop being critical of yourself. All right. <laughs> um, so... Um, yeah, one of the things that you've probably seen in church and heard a lot, I'm sure you've heard it, is uh, uh, God really looks at the heart. Mm. And, you know, skill is good, but, you know, God looks at the heart. So whatever the skill level, don't worry about the excellence. You know, like where the prioritizing goes uh, to what the heart is. And, you know, so what do you really have to say? Does that really work? Does is that? I do agree. God looks at the heart. Yeah. Um. And I would always reiterate that's the core of what we believe as a as mm. a believer. 
but if god looks at the heart and you've done a half you've not really prioritized like you have to come in for a sunday morning service and i and i have songs i have a choice to go out do dinner or go out and hang out with friends or work on songs and come for sunday morning service mm-hmm. and i make it a choice to do that than to prep for what i'm doing because for me worship is also what we do in church right mm-hmm. so if my priority is not prepping for what i need to do at god's house then what is the problem with the heart mm. it is a heart problem yeah it has always been a heart problem and i think people's lack of preparation is really a heart problem it is not a skill problem right. because if you are on the worship team and you have no skill then i think you need to have a chat with the person who put them on the worship team <laughs> right it's not a it's not a yeah. and 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 realize i don't technically for, for a lot of church music your church music is written modern church music is written so that it is easy to play and mm. easy to reproduce without a high level of skill mm. right you need to have some basic level of skill mm. so you don't need to be a technically proficient musician to be able to to pull off a lot of what, what you do in church it takes work it takes yeah. a little bit of time in investment um it takes me about an hour and a half to work through a five song set list mm. right and i normally do it the night before because i've been traveling i'd come back and just yeah. do it an hour before but i will even if i've come back at 3 in the morning i have to be at church at 7 7:30 in the morning mm. i will stay up from 3 to 4:30 learn my song despite the reality is a lot of church songs i can play straight up on ch- in church on sunday mm. without even learning the parts up but for me it is really important to be able to say if i put x amount of work and this is my funda if i put an hour and a half of work to learn five songs that i do outside church for mm. what i do for my livelihood yeah I do I put the same amount of work in and same amount of detailing in wow. for a church song. It's as simple as that. That's towarding your your calling, right? Yeah. If if you had to do a church you had to do a program in your office and they ask you can you do a musical performance with two other people? How much practice would you put in for that? Yeah. Put in the same amount of practice at the least that you do for church. Mm. And the funny thing is that I find a lot of people say oh I'm really busy but for a for a work program because everybody is looking at you and it's a performance i need i'll put like we'll practice four days a week and we'll come in yeah. initially at church we we had a huge problem telling people we need to do one rehearsal before sunday and everyone's like why do we need rehearsal before sunday mm. because technically for rehearsal i want to come in and put the parts together and make sure on sunday morning i'm focusing more on what God wants me to do with the worship and where he wants me to go with the worship yeah. then worry about okay what chord are you playing what is the chord for the bridge what is the chord for that like are we playing in time is that the right thing that happening happening there we don't know that's what we do during rehearsal yeah. we put the pieces together and make sure the pieces fit sunday morning we get together and make sure the sound is right i'm yeah. not learning the songs up yeah. i finish the learning the songs over the week at the rehearsal i put the pieces together sunday i'm just making sure the sound it's ready for sunday morning service mm. and that's how we technically need to do it but i find a lot of people not doing that at all and 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 i and a lot of people say it's about the heart i will tell you if you've not prepped it's really about the heart and i agree with you yeah. it's not about the heart <laughs> it's all about the heart if you if you you've got your heart right i don't care if if somebody is in the worship team and plays three chords yeah. the only thing that's required from the person is know your song and play your three chords well Mm. I don't expect them to play seven chords. They don't they're not expected to play 10 chords. Right. You're there because we know we we underst- like a lot of people you can play three chords, you can play three chords. It's as simple as that. If you have uh, a Maruti 800, we cannot fit 10 people into your car. <laughs> It's a given. Yeah. You're not you don't have a a bus or a tempo traveler. You That's all you're expected to do, but make sure your or, like your Maruti runs well. That's yeah. all you're supposed to do. And a lot of people think when someone talks excellence that means i need you need to be able to play professionally no yeah. it means do the little you do and do it well yeah yeah so i think like you know god definitely gives the calling right yeah and i believe god even gives us the creative uh creativity yeah. in every field right yeah. uh for us to achieve it he doesn't give us something that we cannot do i mean of course we cannot do it with this you know with our strength but with the strength we can do it with god we can do right um and i think excellence is one area where uh people always you know like look at god 
mm. like give me excellence right <laughs> and of course uh, and, and the point is you know excellence it's it's your part yeah you know it's your hard work it's your you taking the time it's you being faithful and like exactly what you said about stewarding what god has yeah. given you uh, so i think uh, that's maybe where some of us are stuck in our callings because uh, we are waiting on god to figure this excellence peace yeah. and uh, god is waiting on us to just do something about you know what we've been given totally um so i think yeah just maybe check on each one of our lives and ask god you know I, am i stuck with just a vision or is it stuck because i'm not ready to have a quick point on that i think a lot of people are very confused with the point of excellence and perfection yeah um i think we're called to be excellent not perfect yeah right uh, so we, our, our job is just to do the best like i said navin can only do 6 on 10 and that's navin navin works really hard he does 6 on 10 navin's only called to do 6 on 10 mm. right um somebody needs and god can do something more with it navin's never called to be 10 on 10 it's yeah. the indian parent syndrome even 99% <laughs> is not good enough what Where's happened the to the 1% yeah. uh, what happened to that 1% but i tell you one thing i've realized in life the beauty in life yeah. is its imperfections Wow. Um and I think the beauty about creativity is not in the perfection. The cre- beauty of creativity is in its imperfections. And I think God can use the imperfections better than he can do a lot of stuff that you think you're doing right. Mm. And uh, imperfections make something real. Oh. Um and it's a guitar terminology that we use. Some of the best guitars in the world right now everything is so perfectly tuned it just sounds incredible but it has no character. Mm. Everything is the same. Yeah. The guitars some of the best guitars in the world were manufactured in the 50 late 50s and early 60s. And you look at it and say oh, it's got a design flaw here, design flaw here. But it's those imperfections that give it it its characteristic sounds. It gives it its character and gives it its voice that is so unique. Wow. What God made God made each of us unique so we were different from the person around us. If I try and be perfect, then we're all going to be the same. But it's through our imperfections that God's perfection is made known. So yeah. I think the beauty of creativity is being is not on aiming for perfection, aiming on ex- aiming towards excellence and God using that mm-hmm. to and that characteristic voice that he creates through that wow. to say the story he wants to. Okay. Wow. Well, uh what would you tell people that uh so understand their calling? They got it down. Mm. They've been working on their calling. They're doing everything right. It seems like, you know, they're hitting every tick mark yeah. and it's like okay right on but then they don't see anything happening you know it's like you're doing all the right things you know this is what god called you for and you feel like you know you're just not productive like yeah what do you tell people like that and how do they even like live a life of worship like just praising god for what they have uh, even though nothing is happening with their calling That's one of the hardest places to be when you you're doing your calling and you're just about getting by mm. and you don't see like you know God's going to do something with it but you've been working for such a long time and you see nothing with it. And I think that's a harder place than having things go wrong. Mm. Right? For me really that is yeah. that you can go into this place of limbo. And I think it and that's where I think community really comes in and for me that's really been I would normally encourage people to really rally around people who are going through those hmm. those stages of their lives and in churches and do that with even with musicians is is because that's a hard place to be musically is when oh. you don't see things happening um and you're putting because you, because what you need in that in that point of time is perseverance well wow. and and there are times when that becomes really hard as an individual and that's when when a battle was being fought when Moses had his hands up in the air yeah it took a Joshua and Caleb to help that to help him hold it up in the air yeah. so the battle gets won wow. sometimes that 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 journey it needs people and i think sometimes one of the biggest things that i keep praying for is god help me have the right people in my life who will not hold me accountable to keep me focused on what you've called me to do wow. um and i think that is the biggest thing so one of the things about a calling is every time in your calling you're at a place you're at a doldrum God will bring people and God, and I pray that God will bring people into your lives that yeah. will help you hold your hands up and keep worshiping to the goal that God's called you for. Wow, so cool. Um 
Fun question. Who yeah. do you relate to most in the Bible? Ah, Pick David. one from the Old Testament. Immediately. David. Immediately. It's All great. right. Why? Because he made lots of mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I love it because he knew where to run to. Yeah. And I think that is the reality of us today as a Christian. Mm. It's not about the mistakes that I'm making. It's about where am I going? And what and what is our heart? Like for me, that's the heart question. Mm. When you say God, he was a man after own, God's own heart. He was always saying, God, what do you want me to do? Mm. Like, God, uh, I mucked up, what now? Yeah. God, uh, I mucked up, I'm into your hands, do whatever you want to do. I'd rather be in your hands than in the hands of my enemies. Mm. He knew where to turn to. He made his mistakes, but he knew where to turn to. He honestly tried to work and do stuff. There's a consequence to the mistakes. Mm -hmm. But he knew his strength came from God. He knew uh, what he was was because of God. He knew where to turn to. So I would always tell people, I love David because he knew where to turn to. Mm -hmm. He was an imperfect person who knew where he could turn to. All right, awesome. So if there's uh, one thing that you want to leave us all with from your life journey. Yeah. Um, following God, following your calling, um, things being rough, uh, times when calling seems like it's not a calling anymore, times when you're like, you know, why am I a Christian? <laughs> you know, I could probably make better decisions yes. if I'm not a Christian and following God. So what do you want to leave uh, the listeners with? Uh, just some encouraging thing where how do you worship through this? How do you get by through this? What is the one life lesson that you want to give? Actually, the life lesson is what I learned through music. We are not aiming for perfection in our lives. We're aiming for excellence. Um, and it's not just music. Mm. It's in everything I do, even how I live my life. I am just trying to say, I'm, can I do this better than I did it yesterday? Um, I'm not saying Naveen wants to be perfect. I don't want to try and be a perfect person because my per perfection means nothing. Mm. Right? I'm saying I want to do this walk with God and I want to do the best I can. Because when I take everything in my life away, the only thing that remains is God. And God yeah. is enough. Yeah. Right? Um, and everything I have is because of Him. And if I learn that my, work, my walk with Him is something I'm going to keep persevering on, which means I fail, I will muck up, I will go the other direction, but do I know where to go to? Like the prodigal son, I know where to go to. Hmm. Um, I don't even have to go, like, if I know my father, and I know the heart of my father, yeah. I can have my conversation with him, and do life with him, and have communion with him, without trying to be, live in this rut of trying to be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I need to be real, and I think yeah. the key is boils down to this. My job is to work at, in my to work in my relationship with God, and it's not a, mm. it's not even a thing about excellence. It's just work on saying, God, help me to be at, get to know you better than I did yesterday. Help oh. me to love you better than I did yesterday. And not compare it with other people. Yeah. Compare it for you and Him, and say, God, help me be better yeah. than I was yesterday, and do that journey with Him and be real. Wow, so cool. Um, yeah, I just want to say, like, yeah, I think hopefully this conversation has been a blessing. I know it's been a blessing to me. Um, I, I know that anytime somebody gets a call, even true for my life, mm. it's always bigger than yourself, you know, and that's how you know it's from God. Uh, if it's something you can do on your own, then, you know, you don't, <laughs> you don't need, need God. So uh, I, if you look at the Bible, everybody who had a call, yeah. had no control over how to yeah, fix it. No control. So I think that's your first place to be aware uh, if you're f struggling through this, if you're fighting your call, if you're like, this is so much bigger than I am, uh, you are probably in a good place. You are probably in God's hands. Uh, and, you know, God is not uh, someone that just tells you, hey, this is your calling. And he's like, okay, go figure it out on your own, yeah. own right? Good luck. You know, I'll, I'll talk to you later. I, I believe God journeys with us. Uh, till we get to that place. I love how you're talking about till even our character gets to that place where he can actually uh, do that calling through our lives. So I believe that uh, if you're not seeing God fulfilling the calling, continue to work on it. Let God... Quick you know, thing. Yeah. God is more concerned about you than your calling. Yeah. Amen. He cares yeah. about your, the state of your heart and the state of your relationship with him. The calling is, is inconsequential to him. Yeah. The calling is a byproduct. Amen. So. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. So 
um yeah that's one thing i want to say right like a lot of times we focus so much on our calling uh, and yet what god is looking for our character to change at the end of the day he's just going to look at us and say you know did you become more like jesus you know he's not saying hey did you play 500 gigs you know yeah. did you did you do this did you play did every you, note perfectly yeah did you do all of this did, how was your calling did you finish it right like you keep running the race that's your job you keep running the race you make sure you're running the race with god uh, so for the ones that are struggling in their calling uh, i just want to encourage you that don't give up uh, and if there are ones around you that want to give up on their calling stick to them you know and encourage them and let's do this together because i believe uh there is a church there's people uh that's going to walk into what god wants each one of us to do and it's going to be beautiful um and i think it's so amazing that any time we get to come together have conversations right there's always something that god uses to encourage each other uh so just want to say thank you navin for you're welcome being part of this and i hope you're blessed totally. um and the listeners as well uh so i just want to say yeah i love god to give you give you his calling yeah and uh, i love god to work through you creatively in every area of your life uh and then uh, set yourself to a standard of excellence that god cares about uh not something that you put but you know set yourself up to a standard where your heart is in the right place i love that you know your heart is in the right place that everything that comes out of you is of excellence all right god bless you guys and uh um maybe we'll end with this and then we'll transition uh what is uh, one of your favorite worship songs uh it, it kind of keeps changing um technically i like a lot of For me, a worship song is any song that my heart resonates with God, technically. Yeah. So it could be a situation I'm going through in a particular song. So I don't have a favorite that way. Yeah. But one of the songs that I think resonated with me the longest for the lot was this song by Planet Shakers called The Anthem. Anthem. And it's the one thing that I think for the longest time was something that really resonated uh, with me. And it was really my song to God. And it was the song that I was really, it was my worship song to God. All right. That's all the time we have for this week. Uh, join us next week. to listen to the rest of this conversation thank you guys